What's up sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel and it is time to give you my way too early 2024 college football playoff top contender slash dark horse playoff contenders as we are still looking way ahead to the 2024 college football season. And like I said, it's way too early to be doing these types of videos, but we're doing it just for fun, of course. I like to look into the way too early stuff and everything, look at the way too early top 25 for myself, and then look at the way ahead of the power rankings and everything. We've done those power rankings already. If you have not seen that video, go sh uh, be sure to check it out. And also, we have done my way too early top 25, so be sure to check that out as well. But now we're going to give you my way too early uh, college football playoff contenders, um, top contenders slash dark horses uh, how this video works we're pretty much you know basing this off of where the teams were from last season and also giving you some top contenders of which teams have a chance to make the playoff those teams that are top contenders for me uh, definitely have a chance to make the playoff automatically and then of course for dark horses you know they have a small chance but they're called dark horses for a reason uh, they'll have a chance to make the playoff as well and there are officially going to be a 12 team playoff of course this year I'm very excited for for that and um, you know I, I don't really want to do a way too early playoff prediction uh, basically because it does take a little bit of while to kind of figure out uh, which teams are going to be in and everything and I haven't really gotten into the 12 team playoff study a little bit of it but I'm going to get into it once um, you know the early season comes around and everything so um, again there are going to be four conferences to keep an eye on as well you got the ACC the Big Ten the Big 12 and the SEC no more Pac-12 of course I mean there's obviously going to be four conferences champions and then you got you know a like a course a group of five team as well coming into the playoff uh, we might see two group of five teams now in the playoff just because the Pac-12 is over so um, we're going to get right into it here again it's my way too early college football playoff top contender slash dark horses for the 2024 college football season and we will start with the top contenders and then we'll go our way down to the dark horses so we'll start with the ACC I think your top contenders are only four to State in the ACC. Uh, the ACC was not very good last year as a Power Five conference. You know, it was one of the you know worst um, Power Five conferences last year compared to the other four conferences. Uh, Florida State really owned that you know conference and everything last year. They were the only undefeated ACC to go team to go undefeated last year, and they definitely missed out on the college football playoff. Uh, you know, Florida State. You look at this team from last year again, undefeated this year. Uh, they're going to lose a lot of talent, especially on the defense side of the football offensively wide receiver going to be a big issue and then you got you know Jordan Travis gone but they bring in DJ Ogale who could really help out for this Florida State team at quarterback but as of right now this is the only team that I could see out of the ACC making the college football playoff you got other teams out there you know you got SMU coming to the conference I mean there's going to be 17 teams of course in this conference next season but Florida State as of right now based off of where they were last year they're the only top contender that I I see out of the ACC to make it into the college football playoff and also as the conference champion and again this is my only top contender in this conference and then we go to dark horses in the ACC I think you got three teams here you got NC State you got Louisville and then you got Clemson uh, based off of where these teams were, were, were last year um, you know Louisville you know I know they should be like a top contender because Jeff Brom led this Louisville team to like a 10 win season but I have to see more from Louisville if I'm gonna like you know put them in the top contenders category I thought about putting them in there but you know I'm gonna put them as a dark horse contender as of right now and then NC State they're not far behind I said that NC State in my ACC power ranking video could be a very sneaky good team in the ACC and they also could be a dark horse contender and possibly make the ACC championship and again watch out for the Wolfpack next season and then Clemson here coming off a nine win season I think you have to put Clemson here as a dark horse because they haven't been really good in the last like I think three years perhaps Dabble Sweeney has not really you know brought in some transfers and he just hasn't been recruiting that well ever since you know those uh, Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson days uh, you know Clemson you know it seems like they are just you know not really good in this era of college football so um, Clemson Louisville and NC State these are three teams that I think you'll be your dark horses as of right now and again this is based off of where the teams were from last season so that is my top contenders and dark horses for the ACC let's go to the Big Ten now so you got four top contenders here I got Michigan Ohio State Penn State and Oregon I think you got four top contenders here I'm um, obviously there's gonna be a lot of teams in the Big Ten next
next year. This is going to be a stacked conference with 18 teams. You got four newcomers coming in. You got Oregon, uh, you know, Washington. You also got USC and UCLA. UCLA and USC are very big question marks. And then you got Oregon here, I think, is the hottest newcomer coming into the Big Ten next season. Uh, Dan Lanning has done a really nice job in the uh, transfer portal. Got Dylan Gabriel coming over there at Oregon. Uh, we obviously saw that he was like a candidate for the Alabama job for Nick Saban, but he decided to stay with Oregon. So I'm really impressed that he was deciding to stay with Oregon instead of going to an Alabama team and an Alabama program that doesn't really need him. And they signed a top five recruiting class as well. So Oregon is red hot, you know, coming into next season. Uh, you know, I think they have a chance to probably win the Big Ten in their first year. Then you got Michigan. They're going to lose a lot of talent on, you, you know, on both sides of the football. Still no word yet as of, you know, I'm recording this video. Still no word yet of J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards. Obviously, Blake Corum would be a huge loss. And then Ohio State here. Marvin Harrison is gone, but they do bring in Will Howard as the quarterback of the transfer portal. Uh, they do bring him from Kansas State. Does have experience. And then for Penn State. You know, you got this team that returns Drew Aller at quarterback, and then you also got uh, your top two running backs coming back as well. Uh, you know, let's be honest. Any Big Ten team is going to make it into the college football playoff regardless. I think, you know, two teams can possibly make it in. Probably the runner-up from the Big Ten championship and also uh, the Big Ten champion as well. And, again, I'm just starting to learn more about this big uh, out of these 12-team um, playoffs and everything. So these are my top contenders in the Big Ten uh, for next season, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State in Oregon. Moving on to the dark horses. I think you got one, and that's Washington. Uh, Washington, I don't really expect them to take a big step back. You know, maybe it is a step back year for them because they are losing Michael Penix at quarterback, some wide receivers as well, and they're just overall going to lose a lot of talent. But, you know, I think this will still be an 8, 9, you know, 10 win team, something like that. But schedule is a little bit tough when you're coming into the Big Ten next season. But again, Washington here as a dark horse contender, I think you have to count them here as a dark horse in the Big Ten. So these are my top contenders and dark horses for the Big Ten Conference. Moving on to the Big 12. This is the conference that I think will be a lot competitive uh, in 2024. My top contenders for the Big 12 are Arizona and Oklahoma State. Uh, you look at Arizona coming off a 10-win season last year. This is the team that I think has a chance to make the college football playoff automatically. They were ranked number one in my power rankings yesterday for the Big 12 power rankings. Again, if you have not seen that video, be sure to check it out. And again, Arizona was just a red-hot team last year. And then you look at Oklahoma State. Uh, this is a team that went to the Big 12 championship last year and won 10 games as well. It is going to be like a fight here for maybe that number four spot for the 12-team playoff uh, between these two teams. Like I said, Arizona and Oklahoma State here. These are definitely top contenders heading into the Big 12 next season and definitely top contenders for the college football playoff. So these are my top contenders for the Big 12. Moving on to dark horses. I think you got four of them in this conference. I got Utah, Kansas, Kansas State, and West Virginia. Utah obviously bringing back Cam Rising. I know they should be a top contender list. I did rank them. You know, in the top 10 of my way too early top 25, I know a lot of people are kind of, you know, explaining, you know, kind of like saying in their head, why is Utah ranked in the top 10? Well, they do bring back Cam Rising, and I just think this offense will be a little bit better, but I am still picking them as of right now as a dark horse in the college football playoff. It will be a tough you know, tasks, especially with this new Big 12 and everything, but Utah here in this category. And then you got Candace. Uh, I haven't really heard anything if Jalen Daniels is returning or not, but if they do bring him back and fully healthy, uh, Candace could be a very dangerous team next year. So watch out for the Jayhawks. Kansas State, you know, obviously I think they'll be a lot better kind of compared to last year. It was a bit of a step back for the Big 12 champion in 2022, but they do have a really good backup quarterback replacing Will Howard. So we'll see what happens there. And then West Virginia, this is a top 25 team in my opinion. Watch out for the Mountaineers. They also have good momentum going into, uh, you know, next year in 2024. So these are my dark horses in the Big 12, and those are my top contenders slash dark horses for the Big 12 Conference. And again, no Pac-12 next year, of course. 
uh, you know, that's going to be the difference there, uh, you know, depending on which conferences that we're studying and everything. But let's now go on to the last important conference that we keep an eye on, and that is, of course, the SEC. So your top contenders in the SEC is Georgia, Alabama, and Texas for me. Uh, Georgia obviously will have a lot of talent next season with Kirby Smart as the head coach. They also will bring back Carson Beck at quarterback. And then you got, you know, Alabama, of course, Nick Saban retiring. That was a huge news yesterday. Uh, my thoughts on that news? And I was very shocked. I didn't really, you know, believe it at first, but it is now true. Alabama retires, or actually Nick Saban retires at the age of 72 and then retires after 17 years of Alabama. Alabama, I think, is now going to lose some players. You know, I don't really want to pick them as a top contender anymore just based off of that Nick Saban is retiring. But we do have to base off, you know, this way too early list just based off of where the teams were from last season. So that's the reason why Alabama is still in this top contender ca category. Texas, we just saw yesterday that Quinn Ewers was announcing that he was returning for his senior season. That is definitely a huge return here for this Texas team. Now, they are going to lose some key pieces on the defensive side of the football and, you know, at the running back position, but I think they'll be fine. You know, they'll be explosive all on the offensive side of the football uh, because we know that Steve Sarkeesian will have his Texas team ready to go. So these are my top contenders in the SEC. Again, I got three teams here, Georgia, Alabama, and Texas. Of course, the newcomer in the SEC for next season. And then moving on here to the dark courses, I think you got three of them. You got Tennessee, Oklahoma, and LSU. Tennessee should be really good on the offensive side of the football. Uh, we saw what Nico could do in the uh, bowl game against Iowa and everything. Future's looking pretty bright at quarterback for this Tennessee team. And then Oklahoma here, uh, you know, like I said, they're going to have the talent. You know, I think this is still a top 15, maybe even a top 10 team to make the college football playoff. But heading into the SEC next year, I think, the, you know, right as of right now, you have to count them as a dark horse contender. So um, Oklahoma here is an SEC dark horse contender. And then you got LSU here. This team will obviously bring in some transfers to help them out. Uh, you know, based off, you know, losing Jaden Daniels and everything, I have to put them here as a dark horse contender. I mean, I, I'm not saying that LSU is going to be really bad next season, but again, they'll bring in some transfers to help them out. They'll probably get like a transfer quarterback to come in and fill in for Jaden Daniels. But these are three um, dark courses in the SEC that I can think can really challenge those top contenders. Again, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and LSU here in the SEC. And like I just mentioned, no more Pac-12, so we don't have to talk about the Pac-12 teams anymore. But let, now let's get right into the uh, other teams outside of these four conferences. Uh, that can make it in. Like I said, with a 12-team playoff and everything, uh, there is at least going to be like some group of five teams in there. But how about the independent teams? How about Notre Dame here in the independent? Uh, this is a team that can probably make it into the college football playoff. Uh, Notre Dame's obviously bringing in, you know, Riley Leonard from Duke. Uh, that's a definitely a huge pickup at quarterback for them. Sam Harbin is now gone. I think Notre Dame will be pretty good next season, especially on the offensive side of the football. They got LSU's offensive coordinator coming in. That will definitely be a big pickup for this Notre Dame team. And I think they could be one of the best offenses, mainly in the country, but maybe not in the country as of right now. Uh, you know, like I said, it's way too early to tell. And, you know, way too early to kind of talk about that. But Notre Dame here, uh, they could definitely make the college football playoff next season. They'll probably be a high seed, but, you know, I think they'll probably have a chance to make the 12-team playoff next season. So Notre Dame here at the independent, I think they'll – Probably make it in just depending on what their record is. And then for the group of five teams, these are the two group of five teams that I think have a chance to make it in. I got Tulane and Liberty uh, based off of where they were last season. Tulane, you know, it was a bit up and down for them once they got into the uh, second half of the college football season. But I think this is still a really good program. And then Liberty here obviously went undefeated last year before suffering their first loss in the bowl game. But I think you have to put Liberty in here, to be honest, because this team was very good on both both sides of the football. Now they do lose their starting quarterback from this, you know, last year, I think entering the transfer portal or maybe to the NFL draft. I don't really remember. But if there was any other group of five teams out there that I think could possibly make it in, uh, Boise State is one of them because they do dominate the Mountain West sometimes. So maybe there's three out there, but based off of where these teams were from last season, this is all I'm going to go with right now. So these are the two group of five teams. Again, Tulane and Liberty that I think can make the college football playoff, the 12 team playoff next season. And I'm just very excited to see what this 12-team playoff has in store for us, you know, starting this year and then for the, what the future has to come here for the 12-team playoff as well. So these are my way too early 2024 uh, college football um, 
college football playoff, um, you know, like I said, way too early. Top contender slash dark horses here. As again, we are looking way ahead to the 2024 college football season. And again, we are going to be starting our schedule preview and projected record series, uh, looking at every single team's, uh, you know, schedules and everything, previewing them, and then also giving you an early projected record based on that schedule. So watch out for those videos. We're going to be starting them next Monday. We have a lot to come here on this channel. And like I said, we have a long way to go here in this off season, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned here for more sports content videos on my Lucas Ross sports channel.